Invest Africa, proudly brought to you by KPMG. If sunrise brings about hope, then no words ring truer for the West African nation of Côte d'Ivoire. As one of the oldest independent African states, Côte d'Ivoire's post-colonial history is filled with highs, lows, and battle scars to match. From civil war to the number one cocoa producer in the world in less than a decade. Much like the sun rises and sets, this is a tale of one country's rise, fall, and resurgence of hope. This is the economic story of a former ECOWAS powerhouse claiming back its stake. Côte d'Ivoire, uh, let's say, is, uh, is back. But more than that, Côte d'Ivoire is um, a gate for the West African region economy. It's the second economy of this region. But before we get into the story, let's first introduce you to some of the region's deal breakers and makers. Alassane Dumbia is the vice president of SIFCA. SIFCA is a diversified agribusiness conglomerate and one of the biggest players in the West African agri sector. This company has a 50-year track record with activities spanning from Ghana, Benin, Nigeria, and Côte d'Ivoire. A name synonymous with the banking sector in the region is that of Daouda Koulibaly. He is the CEO of Societe Ivorian du Bank, known as a man with a hands-on approach. Then there's the tech team from one of Africa's biggest advisory and audit firms, KPMG. Thierry Colatrella heads up advisory, while Frank Nangbo is the managing director who's handy in audits. Between these two guys, you have a great litmus test for business activity in the country. Their business is business. For the last five years, Roman Neyran, the financial control director at Sokoprim, has been structuring a deal that would save the development of the country's multi-million euro infrastructure project. He's a man on a tight deadline. CPC is the national agency in charge of promoting investments in Côte d'Ivoire. It's led by this man, Esmil Emmanuel Essis, a former private sector CEO who now ushers investments back to his home country. And lastly, but by no means least, Bruno Leclerc, head of the French Development Agency, a French public institution that finances project development in more than 60 countries around the world. But to understand how these players fit into the economic makeup of Côte d'Ivoire, some background is needed. Côte d'Ivoire's French influence can be traced as far back as 1637 when missionaries landed in Assini, which is now Ghana. By 1844, a peace treaty was signed between two rival kingdoms in Côte d'Ivoire. This treaty placed France as the protectorate of Côte d'Ivoire. This saw the expansion of French trading companies, explorers, and even soldiers. Côte d'Ivoire became a full French colony in 1893 under Captain Binger. This shared history between these two countries is evident still, not only in the language, but also in the close economic and social ties. The French Development Agency, or FDA for short, first set foot in Côte d'Ivoire in the early 1950s, and barring periods of unrest, this agency has been one of the main drivers of social and economic development. The agency's projects are aligned with Côte d'Ivoire's Plan National Development, or the National Development Plan until the year 2015. The agency employs several instruments to finance and support projects in Côte d'Ivoire. One such instrument is the debt recycling mechanism of the French HIPIC program for highly indebted and poor countries. It's an initiative to reduce the debt of African countries and uh, France has decided in addition, in addition to the normal uh, reduction of the debt to use and to create a specific mechanism which is to convert in grant a part of the public aid that had been given to the country. Uh, specifically for Ivory Coast, it means a lot of money, a big amount of money. It's 2.9 billion of euro. France and Côte d'Ivoire have agreed to implement this debt recycling mechanism for the next three years with an annual budget of 630 million euros to be spent across six priority areas, from education to health, social development and road construction. The FDA is intervening in numerous infrastructure projects, 
like the road built from the north to connect the greater part of Côte d'Ivoire with Abidjan. There is also a road to the west connecting with neighboring Ghana and another to the east. This debt recycling mechanism is also used as a grant in other sectors like education. The FDA is supporting the construction of 110 primary schools, 40 secondary schools, and the upgrading and supporting of technical colleges and universities like Institut National Polytechnique Houfoui Bueni. The latter is one of the best study institutions in Côte d'Ivoire. FDA money will also be invested in labor-intensive industries to support Côte d'Ivoire's employment policies. But most of the work will be done in agriculture, a sector which makes up a quarter of the country's GDP. We will um, support with uh, our um, grant uh, under the debt recycling mechanism, agriculture. And in agriculture, we will support five value chains because um, a value chain goes from the farmer to the transformation of the product. And at each set step, it can create added value, it can create income. So we consider that uh, all the value chains have to be uh, supported. We think also that um, we have a, a, a specific instrument to support this kind of uh, development of agriculture, which is what we call contractual agriculture. Here's how contractual agriculture works. First, they, the French Development Agency, will identify a big agro-processing company with its own nuclear production. Then these companies are paired with small neighboring farmers, who will be financed by the FDA. The agency will give concessional loans to banks based on a tripartite alliance between the bank, the farmer, and the agri-company. The aim is a win-win solution, where the agri-company gets more production for its business, and the smallholder farmer, through advice and extension packages from the agri-company, can produce good harvest to sell back to the same company, creating a win-win. Bruno knows this play all too well. He has won before playing this very same hand. I was in Ghana before and it worked quite well. Five phases in the rubber sector with the uh, local Ghanaian uh, rubber company. And we think that it is really a model that could be developed and expanded in other countries. And I think there is a big potential in Ivory Coast to develop this kind of mechanism, contractual agriculture. Following independence from France in 1960, the development of cocoa production for export and attraction of foreign direct investments positioned Côte d'Ivoire as one of the most prosperous West African countries. This could not, however, protect the country from political turmoil. I think that for any crop, cocoa or another crop, what um, we need, what the government needs, is really a good dialogue between all the stakeholders of the value chain. When I am talking of uh, all uh, of a whole dialogue, uh, it, I am talking of, uh, of course, the farmers, or groups of farmers, here uh, cooperatives, or inter-profession associations. And I think uh, Ivory Coast is uh, very well organized. You have very strong uh, farmers associations in specific sectors, all palm, uh, rubber, cocoa. We knew of a man who knows about oil, rubber, and sugar. Alassane Dumbia is the vice president of Sivka. Sivka is an Ivorian company founded in 1964, used to be in cocoa production, but has since changed track, and now deals mainly in the cultivation, processing, and marketing of vegetable oil, natural rubber, and sugarcane. Sivka is now a diversified agribusiness conglomerate with a presence in West African countries. As big as Sivka is, it too feels the drag of Côte d'Ivoire's land ownership. It is true that our business is grounded on the land, and it's also true that we have some problem facing land ownership in Côte d'Ivoire. To settle these issues, we have set up an office in our company, which manages all the land issues. So what we do is set up a win-win partnership with the local people, and the objective is to grow our different products, and in return they give us back pieces of land to do our business. It is estimated nearly two-thirds of Côte d'Ivoire's working population is involved in agriculture in some way, and Sivka employs nearly 29,000 people. Its vice president is very cognizant of his sector's responsibility to the stability and growth of Côte d'Ivoire. 
The collaboration between us and small-scale farmers is very important because it represents 60% of our intakes in terms of raw materials. And this collaboration is a win-win partnership. And aside from that, we create some facilities in the different geographical areas where the farmers can ease their lives. Sivka has had to weather tricky terrain of the war in 2001 and ensuing political unrest. Sivka emerged even stronger with a commanding market share. We are the leaders in terms of vegetable oil production in West Africa. Through our company, Olegenus Oil, or palm seed, which produces over 300,000 tons annually. And we are a major refiner as well. Still in West Africa, we are the leaders in natural rubber production, producing 160,000 tons. We also have a sugar company called Sucrevoir, and we are the biggest producer of sugar in Côte d'Ivoire with 100,000 tons for the country. In 2008, Sifka increased its capital stock by 25% by issuing new shares to Novu, a joint venture between two Singapore groups. By the end of 2008, Novu had invested nearly 200 million US dollars into Sifka businesses. We are a company with two subsidiaries listed on the BRVM stock exchange. We have a double-folded interest in being listed on the stock exchange. On the one side, we have small-scale farmers who are our partners and need to know figures concerning our companies. On the other hand, the financiers who need to know of the company's performance and financial standing. This is one of the core of our value of sustainable development. Sivka runs industrial farms and keeps a watchful eye to support some 5,000 small-scale farms, which affect the very core of this company's margins. We aim to supervise the small-scale farmers, and we do a technical supervision. We teach them how to grow different plants, we teach them how to harvest, and we teach them how to deal with all the technical aspects of producing the raw material we need for our company. Another aspect of the contribution is the welfare of small-scale farmers. We develop facilities in the different regions, such as hospitals and roads. In brief, the aim of SIFCA is to supervise small-scale farmers and create a win-win partnership. Despite massive investor interest from Asia, Alassane remains wide-eyed about investment opportunities in Côte d'Ivoire's agricultural sector. Lots and lots of investments can be made in the agribusiness in Côte d'Ivoire. If we take the case of the Asians, they are still expanding in their business investments in the agribusiness. So, Africa is the new frontier. And that future looks lit up with wins. In 2012, the country's GDP grew by a whopping 9.5%, albeit from a small base. In the 2013 World Bank Ease of Doing Business report, Côte d'Ivoire shot up like a bullet. But just how hard is it to sell Côte d'Ivoire to the international investment community? So the first is information. Second step, then they came. We created the company in 24 hours at our one-stop shop. Afterward, we given the facilitation and the advantage of the investment code which have been established and we are in charge of managing this, this, this investment code. And afterward, we go to on the land, give them the land to establish the plant and then hope then that they will have a successful I mean, management and uh, I mean, operation. And afterward, we go on the, on, the, on, the, on the field to be sure that things are going are as they are, they are wanting. It's in this time, we are making a lot of implication in improving the environment, economic environment, climate environment, to allow all those companies established to have, I mean, uh, a good return of the, the investment. Ingeniously, it was Alessane Watara, former number two at the International Monetary Fund, who off the back of a prolonged economic crisis in 1993, started this very office. Now, the same office helps his presidency woo foreign investors. A daunting challenge selling a country with a recent past of a civil war and the 2011 post-election unrest. Cote d'Ivoire is back. Cote d'Ivoire is back. We were already emerging in the 60s, but now we are coming back. I say all, everywhere I, 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 I have the opportunity that all country, all, all people in the world have a story. We have our story, but we are, we are now forgetting and we are turning 
on a net another time. So we are back and we are looking now for a future, not for the, for the past. It was in the past, during President Hufuet Buengi's leadership and successive governments, that Côte d'Ivoire intensified its agricultural output, particularly in cocoa and coffee. These economic policies are helping Côte d'Ivoire recover from the hefty price of the civil war. Today, Côte d'Ivoire is playing catch-up to its peers in the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS for short. All those countries are interdependent. Okay? The reason why they, 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 this is ECOWAS. So, for me, it's not, it's not, the, there are no competition. There is competition. When we take Burkina Faso, we take Mali, we take uh, all those countries, they need Côte d'Ivoire. I need them also because I, I, I need some, some projects on it. So the issue is to make complementary, complementary economy. And the challenge for the world, actually, is to have new markets. So, alone, we can, even uh, Nigeria cannot be alone. It should be with people to be more competitive in the world. By all appearances, Côte d'Ivoire is charting a good path. Its stability, however, will remain this developing nation's true test. When we come back from the break, find out why it took more than 10 years to start laying a brick on this bridge. And we also tackle the low penetration of banking in Côte d'Ivoire. Signs of a developing city are all around Abidjan, from road construction and off-peak traffic jams to a flourishing number of micro-lenders and a billboard war being waged by mobile network providers. Signs of an economy on the move and urban migration towards opportunity, burgeoning across a wide variety of sectors. An entrepreneur's dream, but at the heart of any business potential or economic activity, is the banking sector. The sector has an ability to flood the market with cash and bolster economic activity. And when business calls, you call on Daouda Koulibaly, CEO, Societe Ivorian du Banque, a regional bank with ties to Credit Lyonnais in Paris, France. Daouda Koulibaly says the banking sector in Côte d'Ivoire has its work cut out, with penetration of only 15% of the population of about 20 million people. I think the rate of bankable people in the Ivory Coast is going to rise. If we want our economy to boom, we need to work on that. And we are trying to get closer to the population. If you take the example of SIBS in 2009, we used to have 16 branches, and today we have 43 branches in towns all over Côte d'Ivoire. And in the coming years, we are trying to open around 10 new branches. With all this considered, we are going to get more people to open bank accounts in our different institutions which is going to increase the rate of bankable people in the Ivory Coast. Côte d'Ivoire has high lending rates compared to some of its ECOWAS peers. Access to funding is also tough to negotiate. But Koulibaly sees a change in this mindset. I think it's very important for people to get access to loans, and what we are trying to do is help them in that sense. We have put up an office in our company which is in charge of those kind of loans, and our staff tries to help people seeking loans into building up files and submitting them to the banks so that they can get sponsored, and to achieve that objective we are spreading our network. We are getting closer to the population. Since 2011, rumors abounded that the CIFA could be devalued, something which could cause a stir in the banking sector. Devaluation of the CIFA would create problems in this multi-million euro project. It's funded through four different currencies, including the CIFA. Believe it or not, this project started back in 1996, when the bid was first released. It's had six senior lenders in the form of international finance institutions. Well, the first thing is that since 2000, we tried to sit lenders back around the table and uh, we failed in 2002, 2005, and we finally managed in 2008. Why is that? It's because the government did what, it was, ne ne what was necessary to, to bring the lenders around the table. It was two, two things. First one was a revenue guarantee and second one was a subsidy during construction. This will be a 7-kilometer highway made up of 3 kilometers in the north, a 1.5-kilometer bridge, 
and a south corridor of two kilometers. When completed, this interchange will be the most advanced in West Africa. The project will cost a whopping 370 million euros, with firm emphasis on investor returns. There is a profit sharing with the government. Above the 15% internet rate of return for the investor, the state gets 25% of the dividend. Above 23%, the state gets 50%. For every one euro that you give to your investor, the state gets 50 cents. Cents and CFAS are what this KPMG duo is about. Thierry Colatrella puts political stability at the top of Côte d'Ivoire's risk profile, but access to funding is a close second. The second aspect in terms of risk which I will be looking at is uh, the financing. Because as I said uh, uh, earlier, you know, the, the, the financing is very expensive. The cost of financing is very expensive. So companies have to come with money, but it's very difficult to set up business directly in Ivory Coast. Except if uh, you have some donors like uh, the French Development Agency, the EU or other donors who are financing microfinance. And in this case, small companies, you know, can start their business, they don't need a lot of money, but you need to help them. They can start, start their business and, you know, that's going to create value uh, within, uh, within the company and for all the, the, the families working in these companies. Thierry's work is intertwined with Côte d'Ivoire's fortunes. For four years, Thierry and co have facilitated investments into Côte d'Ivoire by identifying local businesses with potential to grow and pairing them with equity firms on the continent. From Citibank to regional players like Africa's richest man, Aliko Dengoti, the advisory firm has dealt with them all. If you want to invest in an economy and be sure that you're going to be successful, you have to arrive in the economy before the economy is booming. You, know? you take a risk, of course, but that's the purpose of business. And I can tell you that uh, Ivory Coast, maybe in 10 years from now, will be a very uh, profitable country. This opportunity is echoed by Terry's colleague, Managing Director Frank Nangbo. He sees a growing opportunity for the firm in auditing the Ivorian government. All the government today are willing to secure the firm. I want to be sure that the fund that they are giving, the expenses that are made on their behalf are done with a lot of efficiency. Also, we are asking money for the lenders, World Bank, IMF, and all these lenders also are pushing all the government for a better governance and all, uh, all, all, all activity that they are doing. So I think that this is a, uh, um, mm -hmm. we, can, we can use and we can talk to them based on the fact that they need to optimize and they need to be sure that all the expenses that they are doing are legitimate because our countries need to, to grow and in continue need a lot of money to be developed and we don't have enough money. We are asking money, we, the, 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 the income coming from our country in Zelthef are not so much. So most of the time the money that we are taking is the money that we are taking from the lenders. We are, so this money needs to be, to be, to be audited, this money needs to be followed and we have to be sure that we are using all this with efficiency. Being on the ground has given KPMG the advantage in attracting big clients. We are acting here in all the, 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 the main area. All in gas. Uh, here in Ivory Coast, we are acting with all the big players. Okay, we are acting with the company, the the, the company named Petrosi, which is the um, the government arm, which is uh, following all the interests of the government in the in the in the oil and gas area. We are acting with the refinery, which is the sea. We are acting with also with Gestosi, which is the company who is holding all the gas stock for the company, to all these big players, we are doing audit for them, okay? In the bank institution, also in the bank area, also, we have something like 40% of the, of, the, of the market. So we have the big players, Citibank, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, the BAO, and which are the local banks, and BAO, which are the second bank and, uh, in, 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 in Ivory Coast. We also have La Bassi. So the big, big players also, we have them in our portfolio. In um, agricultural sector, with coffee, cocoa, 
also we have all the big players. We have Sako, we have Nestle, and so on. So we are we are close to the to 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 the, to the, to the clients who are using, who are pushing the development of this economy because we are already we are we are, we are helping them either in audit or advisory. A ringing endorsement in a country charting a path of growth to phenomenal heights. From mining exploration, banking penetration, infrastructure development and agriculture, Côte d'Ivoire offers boundless opportunities for investment. And if GDP growth of the last three years is anything to go by, then Côte d'Ivoire will be the investment port of call for years to come.